Turn on the torch, light up the flame. Time to melt some glass, my friends. Hello, guys. Uh, yeah, here I am. Hello. <laughs> you can see my reflection. That's all. I, but at the moment, we're not going to be doing stuff with the torch today. I have been... Uh, this last week, I got a chance to go to someone's... Well, I met up with someone close, close by. Actually, he was... I met him close by. He's actually from Florida. His 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 first name is Ralph, and uh, I bought most of his old materials. And he's a glass blower from the '60s and '70s, and he got some interesting stuff that I've been playing with. And I'm going to call these um, open boxes, where I'm actually going to show you what's in them. And these are sort of like the stuff that uh, that he gave to me. Well, I bought, I should say, uh, at a pretty decent price. And I plan on, there's a couple of uh, students in the area that I'm going to uh, also distribute a lot of the tools and stuff that I got. One of the things that he did give me, and I'll uh, sort of just do a reach around here so you guys can see. Oops. <laughs> is uh, he gave me, well, exchange for money, some glass rods. This one, newspaper that's wrapped around this one, is from 2012. And then there's some other ones that also he gave me, like these hoses. Not the other stuff around it in the fan. But behind the fan, I had to put it somewhere, was... Four little bundles of uh, glass rod, and I want to say they're about six to seven mil rod, and I plan on continuing to use that uh, uh, as the time goes on. Also, one of the things he gave me, let me pause here for a second. I guess I'll have to just splice it in. I thought I, I, I forgot that I had it on pause and push the wrong button. He ended up, this is one of his trowel systems, I guess, to hold something in place. Or I haven't quite figured it out, but I'll talk to him maybe and he, he might help me figure it out. Uh, this was basically a, a can of his that was sitting on a, his, uh, his uh, bench, I guess, and he just gave it to me as well. Um, this torch, which is pretty interesting, I did light it up but I will show you and I plan on cleaning it up a little bit and lighting it up again um, probably in an up and coming tour uh, an up and coming video but basically it had some ports that were a little bad off but this one was was one that I was really excited about getting was this scallop shelled pair of pliers he said that they are from Corning area New York the tools the, the plate probably was, and the tool was something he welded together. But, believe it or not, hey, it still works. A lot of people, if it doesn't have a spring, it doesn't do my thing. But I tell you, that will do me quite nicely. <laughs> Even laugh for you. Hi, guys. <laughs> Never mind. And uh, he also modified this pair of pliers with uh, a little bit of uh, sheet inside as well. There's another pair of pliers, if I can find them, uh, that also did the... Uh, he actually took some... Oh, I guess I'll have to show you the pliers later. I did a pair very similar to it, but I hate to show you mine and say... Oh, here they are. Duh. I knew I had them by handy. He took le electrical dis discs and soldered them onto a pair of, uh, well, actually, they're just a set of mashers. And again, if you wanted to mash something thicker, there you go. See, it, then you, you can get it to the point where it just shuts that far and not all the way, which is pretty cool. Other things that were in there in this little can was uh, some uh, Boro bars. I don't know if you're familiar with those colors or not. These are some of the first attempts that they had at putting colors for borosilicate they were uh, reformed from what they would probably call um, um, 
gun mounts for uh, the TVs, the same same colors and rods that they would use for the gun mounts. They also just made into straight rod. And people use those as well. And that tells you how old some of this stuff was. And he also, there was a couple other things in here. Just some odds and end rods. Oh, here's another black, like the black boro rod. Uh, uh, boro, boro sticks or whatever you want. Boro colors. Anyway, uh, some odd things in here. This one looks like a, Little Snoopy type type dog. Broken, but you know what? I'm going to try to bring it back to life and see what I can do with that. Another one is uh, looks like a puppy of some sort, or the back end of a dog or a cat. Can't tell. And there was a swan in here as well. I thought. Ah, uh, nope. There's what. There's a nice little something of his that he did a long time ago something that you would sit probably put up next to a flower or something for a hummingbird there's one of his again these are just a colic can that he, he decided to throw everything in and and uh, this is one of his old type swans pretty cool and this one is ooh. <laughs> I like it. I'd have to say it's an elephant, but I, I probably am going to try to bring that back to life and try to keep it as close to as possible. So, and that's just the way I am. I try to restore and not over compensate, I guess you could say. <laughs> but I will um, revamp in, in newer ones for myself. Which will be pretty cool. Again, this is uh, the stuff that we've already gone through. Let me see. There was another, I thought there was a swan or something. Maybe it's in some of the other stuff that I've already gone through or sorted it out. And oh, here it is. Yeah, it is this one. No, I couldn't tell you what that is. Oh well, <laughs> we'll survive at this point. And again, that was just one of the trays. And he ha heaven knows how how old some of this rod is. Probably 10 to 20 years old. Maybe even more. But that's okay. Uh, because that's the way I, I can work with things. I believe in working them right down to the... Speaking of going from old to new. Here you go. This is some of my latest little odds and ends that I'm playing with. Uh, working with some cane. Or Millie to to get the eyes. Look at that eye, Whew, sweet eye. And I did some dragon heads there, something that would hang. And this one I didn't put an eye on the back side, which I had, but it was mainly for the front side like that. I did, I think, with this one try to put eyes on both sides. There's an eye on that side, and an eye on that side. So. Well, now that I've done and told you those things, there's another little eye milli that I did, but just made it into a little bit of eyeball. Of course, it's not going to focus. There we go. I ain't that pretty. I've also been playing with a little bit of uh, Dicro lately. Oh, here's another one. This one's looking really good, too. So... Uh, let me go ahead. I'm going to turn on the torch and I'm going to um, let you see what this looks like. And I was really impressed with this. Um, and I've got the next torch, uh, the next video that I make in the next little while. I'm going to, um, there was two other boxes. One was filled with regulators and some things and another one was filled with... Uh, a welding torch that I think I can revamp to make into uh, something that I can use either for myself and or for uh, somebody else to use for glass blowing um, and or make a few videos just out for that just from that uh, machine alone another little eyeball mark. Oh, of course it's not gonna come in this time oh well never mind um, so, 
pause. Okay, now we're back. Light up the torch. Let's see if we can't make some flame go on here. And again, what I'm going to do is demonstrate this tool. Oops, here, since most of this is on this, let's see if I can curve that a little bit. There we go. Demonstrate this tool. And uh, I'll also demonstrate uh, the other pliers that he had here. Where, what I, I know they're right just because I can't see. Oh, here they are. I'll, I'll do the discs. Probably should sand these down a little bit better, but I've scraped off and sanded them as best I could to begin with, like these come in handy, and these just to mash something with so that you guys get an, an idea of what you can do with them. Okay, without further ado, let's light some, let's melt some glass, huh? Just remember, you got to take your time and let it melt. I'm going to go ahead, get a nice blob, and I'm going to flatten them with these. Uh, this will really make an, a neat impression. I, I've, I've done it already once or twice, and I really, really did like it. You could do many things with it. Fish fins. Um, just... Uh, angel wings uh, gives you the nice rippling effect going on all the way through it and you know my fold and pull this is a heat mesh and you got your fold and pull ripples in it already see look at that and then all you got to do to make it even more so of a uh, like an angel wing or fish fin is just touch and pull. See there? Right into a nice sweet little angel wing. Bring it up a little bit closer. Yeah, see? I also saw where you could, uh, if you got enough ripples in it, you could do like a hand uh, 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 with fingers, cut out the fingers a little bit more, and the thumb, and the, so you got a shape of a hand. Again, you could do fish fins with it. You could do uh, plant leaves with, of a different style. It, 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 it's not like it has to be, you know, rippled all in one direction. But you could probably let me do that. I'm, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, experimentation. That's what life's all about, ain't it? Ain't it? That's what it's all about. Some experimentation. I'm going to use these flattening discs first to get a nice roundness going on to begin with. Arf, arf. <laughs> Luckily, my neighbor's dogs aren't going. Arf, 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 arf. <laughs> but that's okay. Here it is, the middle of November, or close to getting to the end of November. And tonight is 65, but the whole week has been in the 40s and 50s for a while. And it's like, oh, come on. Here we go. I'm going to flatten it. Nice round disc. Smooth it out a little bit. And then come back with this baby. Press the one side and press the other side. Ain't that cool? That could make a nice palm tree, uh, uh, palm frond, you know, like for coconuts or whatever. That showed up really, really nice. See, it has so many possibilities. It's just a matter of coming, coming up with the ideas and making it so. There we go. Put 
pretty sweet, I think. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that one off. And yeah, you fume, you, you could make a pendant just like this. You can fume it just as is and or add color to begin with and got yourself a sweet little leaf pendant just as is. So it has so much possibilities that you know, it, it, the only thing that stops you from doing your your job is saying, "I can't do anything with that. That ain't going to do me no good." These these reminded me of a pair of pliers that I started out with, but I even started out with a thinner pair. So it's surprising that that um, some of the uh, some of the the things that I knew and understood related well to others as well, uh, without even trying. So innovation comes out all the way around. Now, what was I going to do? Oh yeah. Just basically flat something in with this, these pair of pliers. They really do come in handy. I mean, for tweezers, heavy duty tweezers at that, you don't have to worry about them rippling off or sticking to it really heavy. If it does, then you're really having to heat up some gla uh, metal there. But yeah, you could pinch pinch again pinch again and now we're going to uh, do my take on his little swan that he had I'll do this as the tail I'm not doing this to um, to upstage him I'm doing this to show you that you can get ideas from just about anywhere you look it doesn't have to be made out of glass helps sometimes but or, or just seeing somebody's piece of little piece of ceramic and you say hey you know I could do something like that or that would be great as a piece of glass you know uh, figurine and the only thing that stops you from doing it is you saying, no, I don't think I can do that. You just got to figure out a way of doing it. That's all. Again, I'm putting my, uh, my direction on this, not uh, trying to upstage his. Now, when you're doing a neck to a swan... Pulling up sometimes you, you get a little bit more shaky, but if you're pulling downward in a downward direction, it tends to run a whole lot smoother. So if you have to do necks and stuff like that, doing it downward. Now to put him at the beak of his existence. Now you can add, and I think I will, just a little bit, not much. There's one. Just a little. A little more wing. Not a lot. And sometimes simple is so much easier. Uh, and sometimes simple can be a little bit more complex, complicated to some people because they've got this complex image in their mind and don't realize that hey all I have to do is get the image across to make this a swan not make this look exactly like a swan see a little bit of a rocking horse thing going whoa hold it by the neck heat it up on the bottom and press there we go Not bad, huh? Oops. You can't see it. Sorry. Here we go. And it sits down flat on the table. See there? Oh, right in the flame. What am I doing? 
There we go. Didn't realize it until looking up at the lens. <laughs> That's part of the problem. I, I don't see it from the, the actual camera perspective. But you guys are more in my face than I am, actually. Okay. With that said, I think I'm going to call this quits for the, this, this uh, part of the unboxing. And again, thank you, Ralph, for the, the, the stuff that you have supplied me with. And I have about two, maybe three more videos that we will definitely do. And I will mention you in the video saying that this is some of the tools and equipment or uh, glass that I got from from Ralph uh, during, during the uh, video so that you'll know <laughs> where I got it from and know that it wasn't just... Uh, Something that I, I, I had to buy. <laughs> well, I did buy it, but you know what I mean. Thanks again for watching. As always, Carpe Vitro, and enjoy your day.